all. Glory to God, hallelujah, that you're worthy, Yvonne, all that stuff. It simply means you. But what I want to talk about today is seek God first in every decision. Because every decision is going to make an impact on your life, amen. Glory to God, what you committed to, and when we talked about it, is the total sum of who you are. Yes. It is the total sum of what your life is right now. The commitments that you made in the past is the total sum of what you're going through right now. Everybody with me? So now we're going to talk about, amen, glory to God, Jesus first in every decision. Now, often we think at a certain time we become grown. Everybody experienced that? Yes. And we even tell our parents, I'm grown now. But you're never grown to God. We got this. You're still little children to him. And glory to God. And so he wants to be a part of your decision making. Amen. Second Chronicles says this. Amen. 16 and 9. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose heart are fully committed to him. Remember, we talked about that now. When you go through, because, amen, you are fully committed to God, amen, God will come in the midst of your situation, no matter what it is, and he will strengthen you. This is how you got through things in the past that you thought was going to take you out. It was your commitment to God that caused God to come to your rescue and to strengthen you so that you would get up and get out of whatever was trying to bound you. Whatever was trying to bond you, amen. You know, because you wonder, how did I get out of that? Because some of you made some decisions to do away with yourself. Some of you mm. made some decisions, amen, to give up. Some of you made some decisions, amen, glory to God, not to ever do this again. Some of you made some decisions to depart from the person and never ever go back. Some of you made some, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. You made decisions, glory to God, that took the strength of God to come to your rescue and to lift you up and take you out. That's right. He says, so if your heart is committed to him, if you are committed to him, I will come and give you strength. Thank you, Lord. Ain't no better deal than that. Amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. No matter how you look at it, that ain't no better deal than that. So when we make commitments, amen, we're choosing how, amen, things are going, how, basically how we're going to invest in our life. How are we going to invest in our life? Every commitment you make is an investment in your life. When you commit to God, you invest in Oh, my God, you really invested, amen, glory to God. Because now God can come at any time and help you out with your decisions with life. The reason why some people are going through is because they never, amen, invited God in. They never committed to God. They never said to him, Lord, you are my everything. They never said to him, come into my life and rescue me. And so, therefore, when they go through things, they are going through on their own strength and not the strength of God. But you know that you're going through through the strength of God. Yes. 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 Never would have made. Never would have made. Glory to God, hallelujah. They had not been for the Lord. You never would have made. You are where you are now because God has strengthened you to be there. Glory to God. Glory. And he has made a way, amen, glory to God, for you to be strengthened that even that which you shall face on tomorrow. Yes, sir. Glory to God. One thing we serve is a mighty God. Amen. One thing we serve, amen, is a God that will be with us, never leave us, never forsake us. A God that will see us through. And he will never, ever let us fall into the traps of the enemy. He will never allow us, glory to God, to belly up in anything. Amen. But he said, I promise, yes. I will come and I will strengthen you for those who have committed themselves so here we are. We're putting God in every decision. You know, there's so many people do so many things. And sometimes they're, they're running that decision by you and you just don't say that. You just are in awe about that decision. And, and, and you're thinking all along when they're sharing that decision with you, where is God in this? Where is God and how does this line up with the word of God? See, because we are his and he is ours, we must always, amen, speak like he speak, act like he act, walk like he walk, talk like he talk. And so when our decision making is in process, it should be all God. Amen. amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Glory to God. So we end up in mess because we don't include him. Amen. Psalm Proverbs, Proverbs 3, uh, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, we don't do that. We have to trust in our flesh. We have to trust in the things that are visible. We trust in the things that we can see. 
Oh, let's say we trust in the things that we think we see. Yeah. Glory to God, we trust in the things that people tell us that are unbelief. We trust in things, amen, that people say they're going to do for us. Yeah. We trust in things, amen, that people promise us. Yeah. We trust in everything except in the Lord. But he said, trust in the Lord, amen. This is the scripture, and this is a powerful scripture that we should always, amen, glory to God, have before us, amen. Lean on, trust it, and be confident in the Lord with all of your heart. Not half heart, I mean, not a portion of your heart. And he said, not only with your heart, but your mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Amen. Glory to God. See what has happened. We have gone with our understanding, right? We have not included God, and we have done things, amen, that we call on the name of Jesus amen. to rescue us out of. We call on the preacher to rescue us out of. We call on everybody, amen, but the kitchen sink to rescue us out of the decision that we have made that we did not include God. That part of say, in all your ways. Know, recognize, and acknowledge him. And he will look at that. He will direct, he will direct, he will direct and make straight and plain your path. Some of us are following a blind path. Amen. We're going down a blind road. Some of us don't know what life is going to offer us for tomorrow or, or the next day because we are blindly going through life and we're not trusting God the way that God has asked us. See, he is your light. He's got my light. And, um, I'm a lamp and see the past. See, all of that stuff is in order for the child who committed themselves to God. Everything is in place. You ain't got to go back and relay nothing. You ain't got to go back and redo nothing. All you got to do is commit yourself and just follow and trust him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Simple. Well, what makes us not do it? It's our flesh. It's our own desire. It's our self-will. It's our rebellion. It's all yeah. those things that work against us that live in us. Yeah. Come on, y'all. I know you get perfect, but you got stuff living in you. Amen. Glory to God. That's not working with Jesus. Amen. That's right. Uh, and that's why we submit ourselves unto Him. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. So He's gonna work all that stuff out of us that is not working with Him. Anything that you got in you that is not working with him is working against him and is causing you, amen, heartache and pain. That's where the heartache and pain come from. Then you got the nerve to say, if it's that broke my normal dad, it was decision, yeah. and you're not trusting God. My God. So you preach it. You preach it. God, because you need to get this straight, amen, and all of us to continue to move forward. Now, you got things on your plate. You got things, amen, glory to God, decisions that you need to make. You got decisions that you're presently making. Yes. You got things that are going on in your life, amen, that you need God in the midst of. And let me tell you this, you just don't ask God and then move ahead. Yes. You ask him and then you wait. Yes. Now, what are you waiting for? You're waiting for him to answer. Yes. Many of you just present stuff to God, amen, glory to God, and you think because you presented it to him, that is all right by him. But my friend, sometimes God don't answer right away. Right. Somebody tell the neighbor, God don't always answer right away. Oh, Amen. Amen. Sometimes God will let stuff stew. Yeah. He'll let it simmer. He'll let it sit in the pot. Amen. For a season of time. And then he'll come back. Why is he letting it set? Because you already know the answer when you ask. He letting it set to see what you're going to do. Yeah. Are you going to trust him? Yeah. And lean not to your own understanding. Ah, are you going to acknowledge him? Or are you going to keep on about your own business, amen? Making a bigger mess out of your life, amen? It's us who made the mess of our life. It wasn't God, amen? And you got to stop lying on the devil, too. The devil didn't do everything. Some of that stuff you did. Yeah. Are you with me? You made the decision. You followed it through, amen? Glory to God. And this is what it turned out to be. But we must learn, amen? Glory to God. And make a habit of going to Jesus before anything. Before we make any decision. Now look at what I said. We must learn this and we should make a habit of it. Because when we learn something, we have to make it a habit Amen. in order for it to work. That's how we begin to respond automatically because we learned it and then we practice it and then it became a habit. Amen. Just like the bad habits you got. You knew about, you did the bad habits and then you practiced the bad habits. Now they continue to be a habit in your life. Amen. That's right. Yeah. So we got to put Jesus first. We got to put him on the throne where he belongs. And we not uh, put him under our feet because when we don't console him, we have him under our feet. As a matter of fact, we don't even acknowledge him. Amen, Lord. We just make a decision. Make a decision because of the discomfort that you're in. Yeah. You're making a decision because the last decision didn't work out. It caused another decision, another decision, another decision. And all of them are bad decisions. Now you're working towards trying to get rid and deal with all the bad decisions you made. But he's even going to take God to help you work through that. Yeah. 
Amen. Because y'all looking right in front of me, Janine. So. <laughs> but I need you to be with me in this because this is designed Amen. to bring you out. Amen. This is designed to give you the freedom you need. This is designed, amen, to take away the demon group that you constantly live in. This is designed, amen, to take out of your life, amen, all the sadness that you engage in. And take away, amen, all the all the glory to God, hallelujah, unhappiness that you wake up every day and, and involve yourself in. This is designed to give you freedom. This amen. is designed to put you in a new place, in a right place, amen. It's designed to be for the face of God. It's designed, amen, to cause you to be rich and glory to God and be a lender and not a borrower. Amen. It's designed, amen, to reform your life and to remake your life, glory to God, that you may be the person. Remember what we talked about last week? That you may be the person that God created you to be. Now, do you realize that when you were born, before you were born in your mama's womb, before you were conceived in your mama's womb, that God had a plan, gave the plan, put the plan in your, your, your soul, amen, put the plan to work in you before you even came to this place where you came, glory to God, a, 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 an individual where breath was breathed in you, amen, that was a plan that was planned way back there, in, in your depths of your soul, amen, by God. But what happened to the plan? We allowed so many other things yeah. to wash it out. We allowed them to water it down. We allowed it, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, to take precedent over what God really wanted for us. Yeah. But I have a great plan working in my life. You have a great plan that should be working in your life, glory to God. But you can't find it because you got so much other stuff yeah. doing it. That's why we say, well, I don't have any purpose in life. Well, you have a purpose, and you were given a purpose, and God gave you that purpose, glory to God, but it got washed out. It got pressed down. It got, oh, my God, my God. It got smothered by the stuff. You are listening to me. By the stuff that you brought in. Now what you do is you continue to make other friends, other friends, other friends, other friends, and those friends, they were not. Because right. they were not the plan that God has for you. Then you walk into the face of a preacher and preach say, oh, baby, you can't do that. And then my friend, <laughs> you know that spirit you got, right? Glory to God, hallelujah, you're grumbling, you're mumbling, you're mumbling. When they say, no, we want you to get on track and let you go the way that God wants you to go. Yeah. And it's, un it's unusual to you because you never walk that way. Yeah. Amen, but it's new to you because you ain't never been that way. You ain't never seen that. Glory to God, and you deem that it's been hard. It actually is the will of God for you. And once you start getting lined up, aligned to it, it becomes easy for you. But you're just looking like ahead in that. This is going to be difficult. Oh, Lord, I can't do this. Oh, you ain't doing it. Yeah. Because you ain't doing it. Yeah. You ain't doing it. Yeah. Into place. So therefore, if God, if God gave it, it's his, he's obligated to work it out. Just like Amen. I said, the situation I had, I ain't going to name the names, say no stuff, and go to no stuff. But that's like I said, the one that I was in play was God's will yeah. for that individual, amen, but they couldn't see it because there was another voice. See, you better watch the mother voice. There was another voice speaking in his ear, glory to God, hallelujah, that caused him to miss the purpose of God. But it's like, you better be careful with the other voices. Yeah. 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 Y
And so where is your desire of going or uh, uh, wanting a leader or wanting somebody to tell you right or wrong, and then when it comes to you, are bad at it. What, what's going on here? But God wants to lead you, and he will lead you in the right direction. He will lead you in the right way, amen. We will, amen, glory to God. He will eliminate a lot of problems if you just don't talk. Because he can tell you, you know, God has sent you words, amen, glory to God, to answer that you ain't discussing nobody. And all of a sudden you get a text, all of a sudden you get a call, all of a sudden you get a note, all of a sudden somehow they're talking about how she know, who told her, what's this, 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 Y'all some suspicious people. <laughs> <laughs> you think, amen, every, every act of God should be sought out and you should be suspicious of it. But when you learn to trust the Lord, you get rid of suspicion. Yes. And you start believing that God knows everything about me. Yes. I don't care if you don't tell nobody, God still knows. Yes. And if you choose to tell somebody and they come to you with two legs, the least you can do is receive it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And be blessed by it. Because, you know, he, he, he's willing to look at all those little details. You know the things that you still wait at night? Crying on your pillow? Going through changes to God? And then you can't tell me you don't do it because I can remember the days when I used to do it. Crying all night, go to bed, crying, wake up with, a, with the leftover stuff. You know what I'm talking about, right? God wants to eliminate that for you because he doesn't want you living a life like that. He wants you to live the life in trust and belief. He wants to be a part of your decision making. And so therefore, when things go wrong, you got a right to go to him. Amen, glory to God, and he fixes it. Amen. But if you made it on your own, and y'all have seen that before, God is not obligated. Not saying you won't, but he's not obligated to fix it. Amen. And it's amazing to me that we do things and make decisions and all kinds of stuff, and then we tell the leader later, and then we want the leader to help work us out. The leader can't do that. They don't work outside of God. Are you listening? Yeah. All right. So your rent was due. The first one rent was a thousand. You come to the leader six months later, that's six thousand dollars. Nothing the leader can do. Life could have helped you out with the one. But now we, six months later. Are y'all listening? Yeah. Because you're holding it because you think you're going to come up with the answer on your own. But let me tell you something. Have you come up with a great answer yet? No. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to trust God. Yeah. Things you don't understand. Trust God with it. Just surrender yourself and yield yourself and involve God. Ask God. Every good idea from you ain't a good idea before the Lord. <laughs> you know, I, just, I think I have good ideas. You think you got good ideas. Mm -hmm. But when we get to work in them ideas, we go with good, all kinds of mess come out, right? Because it was a good idea before the Lord. And so we have to release them. So we get God involved. It doesn't matter, Minister Bola, how big the decision is. Or how small because small things become big things. Y'all know that, right? That's right. And so y'all already tear down, he asked somebody, and you know, he said to God, and I don't know. You might y'all come with all these, these 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 things that your mind think of right, and then all of a sudden, amen, it's a small thing, but it has grew, amen, in size, and it's over your head right now, and nothing you can do about it because you didn't seek the Lord in the decision making. Before husband and wives, you make decisions, you must sit down together. Amen. You must discuss it with each other, and then together you must go to the Lord and present it to Him. Yeah. That's how it works. Are you listening? Yeah. That's how that works. You don't make them on the head. You may be the head, but your head is cracked. Amen. Glory to God. Glory, hallelujah. No God is the head. Amen. And when you agree together on earth, then you take it to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And you work it out. And then, you know, I don't care how big it is or how small it is, but sometimes, you know, we say, well, it's just a matter of buying something at Walmart. 
playing with everybody's money. Any man girl you got to affect everybody. Then you brought the TV in the house, the TV came and get through the front door. <laughs> 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 so a lot of times we can be easily eliminated. <laughs> Glory to God. If we just put God in before we make the decision, yeah. consult the Lord in prayer. Do it just um glory to God. Do it in every situation, amen. Because God is willing to help you. And you know, God is pleased when you bring things to him. Amen. amen. What it does, it, it indicates to him that he is your father. It's just like when you have a little little kid and the kid's growing and you want to do everything on their own. And it does get to say you want to do everything on their own. But you know there's certain things within that means that they can and cannot do, but you want to help them, you know, by, by steering them in the right direction as to which way they should go, right? That's the same thing with our father. He loves us so much, amen, that he always wants to steer us in the right direction, amen. Because our ideas don't always fit his, his plan for us, amen, glory to God. And he loved taking care of you, Brother Maurice. Glory to God. He loved being a friend to you. He loved being a father to your brother and a sister and a mother and a father. He loved that kind of reaction with his children. Glory to God. And we should never, ever withhold anything from him because he said he wouldn't withhold any good thing, hold any good thing from you. Amen. 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 So now we think about our situation. We think about our circumstances. Think about what we're going through. Think about what we're facing. And it's been because of your decision. Yeah. To not to include. I'm not going to be before you long because some of y'all look like you're getting tired of this. So we got to realize some things. Glory to God. If we are fully committed to God, then God said he will strengthen you. Amen. Glory to God. So if you get a little challenge in the decision that you have put before him, you know, amen, and then he will come and strengthen you so that you can remain put through in the, the, the decision that has been made, amen. Then the reason why you collapse and you give up and you uh, toss the decision because you can't find no more strength. You can't find no more answers. You can't find no more nothing to go on, amen. And so the next thing you know, you have another decision in the graveyard of your sin. My God. Yeah. And you think about all those, those decisions you, you, you have in the graveyard. Amen, glory to God. Because you came up with them and you didn't seek God. And some of them made you God's decisions. But because you cast them all in the graveyard, that they God to resurrect, resurrect them, right? Amen, glory to God. And so people of God, we have to be careful, amen, that when we're making decisions, glory to God, hallelujah. See, see God, amen, is, is there to work out life for you. The reason why life is hard, and you say life is a struggle, because you don't have God that working out life for you. Yes, life is difficult. Grant you, amen. It is not easy, easy peasy, and it's not a piece of cake, amen, glory to God. We run into some hard times, amen, that we don't have answers for, and we don't know which direction to go. But God has the answers for us, amen, and we need him working out life. You know, because he can be lining up and sending you all of a sudden, amen, glory to God, just to turn around, go the other way of what you expected. Yeah. You need God to work in your life and to work out your life for you, amen. Then life becomes easy. And not only does it become easy, you begin to enjoy life. Many of us are sitting here right now and we're not enjoying life. Huh? And the reason why we're not enjoying life, we find it so dreadful and we find it so distasteful, is because we are not letting God lead. I'll preach something this way. But this is something we got to get. If we haven't been doing it, we got to do it. Because one of the things I found out, there's many choices out there. Yeah. And that, and, 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 and if you read and you, and, and you listen to news and things, you find out that a lot of people are going totally the wrong way. Yeah, church people too. They're going totally the wrong way. And that's because they don't have God in this. And they are heading down a road of disaster because there are so many choices. Now, when I was coming up, we had too many choices. But what opened up your choice, amen, is the high speed and the net, all those things, and yeah. social media places, and your big ideas, and the people, and things are popping at you, and things are going all the time. But we're like, it's a major challenge for most people. And most of us will look at what other people are doing, and then we try to govern ourselves according to what they're doing. But you better leave that alone. Amen. <laughs> Because it ain't working for them. Yeah. And Facebook make anything. Right? Yeah. That's right. But it ain't working for them. 
the stuff that is having your life behind what you see on social media. Mm -hmm. Amen, glory to God, because those trips that they make into the islands and cross country, they got a bill they got to pay. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you look at them, so and so, I always travel, and I want to travel. You better sit down <laughs> and wait your turn. Because to travel is expensive. Oh, yeah. And they ain't telling you that they took their car note mm. under their car uh, title. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me have y'all. Huh? Car title place. And they gave it to them and they gave them a little money. No. No. And they went into the trip. No. Now the car is up for grabs. Because no. they can't pay them back in the time that they said that they committed to pay them back. Uh -huh. Now that car is gone. But they're not going to put that on me. <laughs> so we always have to, amen, think about what God thinks about. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Glory to God. If we want to be successful in life, we must learn to make a commitment to God and make him the CEO of our life. Amen. Yeah, we're all trying to be a CEO or something. You can be the little CEO, be the big CEO. Big CEO. Glory to God. Make him the CEO of your life. Make him Lord over your life. Make him Lord over your decisions. It doesn't matter how bad it is. Y'all stop looking at the situation. Because the situation is here. But God is here. Uh -huh. So it's God, you, and the situation. But all you're doing is constantly looking down at the situation. Stop looking at the situation and look to the to the one, amen, glory to God. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. Yeah. Your help cometh from the Lord. Yeah. And he said, when you get in trouble, my friend, my child, I'm going to give you strength yeah. to overcome. You ain't got to become depressed and taking pills. Yeah. You say, what is she talking I'm talking about taking pills because you're depressed. Right. I'm talking about, amen, glory to God, locking yourself in rooms, amen, glory to God, for a period of time because you can't see nobody, talk to nobody because you're not in the right frame of mind to do so. I'm talking about, amen, glory to God, going on some type of binge, amen, glory to God, oh, oh, I'm trying to find myself. Except none of that fits into God's plan. Thank you, Lord. God wants to be decision making of your life. Want to be decision making of your life? He must be first. He's letting me know. Amen. I remember when, Amen. Just before I gave my life to Christ, and that was major, big turmoil going on in my life. As a matter of fact, I was dying. I was sick, and and in the midst of the sickness, my doctor had pretty much said, "You know, here's five pills. Take these. It just doesn't work." That he don't know what else to do. Amen. So he pretty much was giving me up. But on my way out of the doctor's office, God sent an angel, a young lady, amen. I don't know who she is today. Glory to God. But she gave me, she was out there witnessing, okay, which we all should do it. And we were witness people wouldn't commit suicide, people wouldn't be dying, people would be okay. But she was out there when I walked out of the doctor's office, she said, Hey, can I share this with you? And she didn't go through a whole bunch of stuff. And in her mouth, like we try to do what we witness, she just gave me the information. And I had the, the, the five pills from the pharmacy, and I had the information that the baby gave me. And I went home. And that night, before I went to sleep, both of them was on the nightstand, the pills and the information. Within myself, I said, not taking the pills, I got a 50-50 chance, right? And they know what? But it's this prayer. Somehow I knew inside. Here's this prayer. Pick up that paper and pray this prayer. I reached over, I picked up the paper that the lady gave me, and I began to read it, and it was a sinner's prayer. Amen. My God. And it caused me. See, y'all gotta stop throwing away some of the material that is given you when you know it's right material because it can be life saving. I began to read that. And as I began to read that, God. Now, some of you ain't going to understand this. Now, let's pray. This is my room. Heal my body. 100%. I'm not talking about 99. 100% heal my body. I fell to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I jumped out of bed because the room I couldn't get out of bed too well. Jumped out of bed, 
I said, oh my God, I am healed. I was like, immediately a voice came and said, oh no, you're not. It was a dream. Recognize who that was. And God said, I'm the Lord your God. I have healed you. Go tell it on the mountaintop. And I'm at the mountaintop right now telling what the Lord has done for my life. Glory to God. And then he told me, look, he said, I want you to repeat after me. There shall not be another God before me. I got saved on that. There shall not. So you wonder why. Why is she overboard? Ain't you this? Because my commitment to God was, there shall not be another God before you. And there will never be another God before you. Because I know what he did for me. I know how serious he is about his child. I know these things, amen, glory to God. That's why I'm not trying to make decisions without him, without his involvement. Yeah, have I made mistakes? Yes. Has he rescued me? Yes. And he told me one time again, listen to me, then your peace will be like the, like the grains of sand that are on the seashore. Yes, I made it because I was human, but he always came to strengthen me. Now, what did that strength equates to? He came to deliver me and bring me out of the mess that I got myself in. Somebody need to listen to this. Now, this is a little 30 some years ago. So it was real to me today as it was then. I still live in the bubble. I still, amen, go back and revisit. I still allow it to wash and cleanse my soul because it was a miracle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The way that God did this. And then when he told me, he said, basically when he said, this salvation is built on this foundation that there should never be another God. Okay. That's why I won't buy three nickels. That's why I preach the way I preach. That's the reason why I stand. My stance with God is the way it is because my commitment with Him was that we'll never give another God. You said, well, you know, another God, another God is anybody else making decisions for me. Yes, another God. Amen. Are you listening? I hope you're listening. To me. And so He said, He wants to be in the midst, He wants to be first. He must be first, amen, in all things. And see, we, we say we're children of God, but we won't, won't make him first. We won't let him be Abba. We won't let him be Father. We won't let him be man. We're going to jump up and we're going to make a decision and we're going to go to God, think that we've done good. We call people, tell them I need to sit there. I need to the house. You don't want a house in a swamp land. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but if you had asked God, yes. you see, I'm just using these things to, to get you to see, you know, how important. It is to include God. Yeah. Glory to God. When you include God, he said, glory to God that I will come and I will strengthen you in trouble. When situations get, when the water get high, if he told you to move in the swamp, and when the water get high, he's going to let the swamp, amen, be all around you, but it won't come back to the door. I got to listen to me, amen. Glory to God. And so that's what he's saying to you. He said, you're mine. I'm definitely committed to be yours. And when I am yours and you are mine, when you get into trouble, I will come and I will sit you. It won't wear you out, Sister LaTantra. It won't wear you down. It won't give you heart attacks and high blood pressure. Come on, y'all. Amen. It won't give you, amen, glory to God, all kinds of sickness and attitudes, uh, little Ava. It won't do that, amen. It will set you free and it will keep you on yes. top of your situation. It will cause you to be an overcomer and not a defeater. Amen, glory to God, on top and never ever be the head, glory to God, and never be there. Amen. Yes, that's how that works. But you live beneath your own. Yes. yes. You live beneath, amen, what God has set for you. When He sent, amen, you to your mama's womb, because you know you were sent to your mama's womb. Ah, glory to God. We chose you and sent you there. My God, He already had a plan, had a plan for you, amen. Glory to God to work your life out for you. Come on, somebody, help me out with that. To work on your behalf, to do what needs to. Because you already saw the path of your life before you got here, because he can see into eternity. Yes. Yes. He can see the beginning from the end. Yes. He can see every little which face now. He who would be there, yes. but he's promised that I would be the strengthener of your life. I would be the one to sustain you. I would be the one to strengthen you. 
when you come to this crossroad, when you come to this path, don't you worry about it, glory God, because I am there to strengthen you. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to be there, and I'm going to do it because you have committed yourself to me. Because you love me. Yeah. Because you have made me first in you your know. life. Because you have made me Lord over your life. You, because, amen, glory to God, you recognize and you believe and you know, amen, that there is no other help for you, glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to be it, amen. If it wasn't for God stripping you at the moment when yeah. you decided that you were going to take your life, that you decided you were going to end it all, glory to God. Yeah. He was God's strength again. Yes, yes. It wasn't you deciding no, I ain't going to do it. It was the strength of God that showed up. Oh, oh. Thank you, God. I got God. And now he's saying, since I have recovered you from many things, I'm going to be in a recovery. Thank you, Jesus. I have recovered you. I ain't ashamed to tell nobody. I've been recovered over and over and over again. I've been recovered so many times that I recovered is my middle name. Amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. When he had recovered me, amen, Lord God. I think of a man each time when I come to a place where I cannot go any further. I think about the recovery power Hallelujah. of Christ Jesus yes. that brought me out the last time, that set me free the last time, that took me over the last time. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, God. And then I gain strength. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah. Woo. I'm so glad I ain't sitting out there with y'all. Glory to God, the eyes of the Lord bring us through out there. You ain't hidden from God. Glory to God, hallelujah. Now you ask him, do you see the trouble around him? You're not hidden from him because his eyes, amen, is all over the earth. It rolls all over the earth. You can hide yourself on a piece of cardboard and he still can see you. You can hide in your house and he still can see you. Yes. You can hide in the drugs, you can hide in the bottle, you can hide in whatever you hide in, but God still can see you. And he's willing, amen, glory to God, to rescue you. Amen. To bring you out, to bring you to the purpose that he has set for your life. Yeah, to bring you, in other words, to redeem you. Back to what he said that you yeah. So, you know, I can't really close this out without altar call. Yeah, yeah because uh, so many here today, uh, I'm preaching, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, until I'm sweating 